Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. And now we have the uh, great privilege of ha hearing from the founding uh, chief executive of NICE um, uh, in 1999. Uh, so Andrew Dillon is uh, here to speak with us about uh, some of the things that Thomas has said and to share with us some of the comparisons and contrasts between the, uh, the NICE experience versus what we might envision here in the way of comparative effectiveness. Uh, uh, Andrew graduated from the University of Manchester and uh, subsequently held a number of senior management positions in the UK uh, in the National Health Service there. Uh, those of you familiar with the hospital system there are aware of the NHS trusts and he was the chief executive of the St. George's Healthcare uh, NHS Trust. Uh, he's been active in the NHS Council of the uh, NHS Trust Federation uh, has been uh, contributing to national policy discussions in the UK for a number of years and is uh, keenly interested in the development and application of health technology assessment. Please welcome Sir Andrew Dillon. somewhere out there. <laughs> but it's not that one. Um, whilst it's coming up, can I just say thank you very much to the organisers for giving me the opportunity of uh, talking a bit about um, NICE's experience of using cost-effectiveness um, reviews. Um, perhaps the most important thing I should say is that um, I'm certainly not here to try and export NICE and its approach to cost effectiveness reviews or as a means of influencing the direction of the US healthcare system. And actually, I think one of the most important points about the whole business of using this kind of comparative effectiveness um, approach to deciding what a healthcare system needs is that it absolutely needs to be tailored, aligned with the culture of the health system itself, its ambitions, and the expectations of those who use it. Um, let's see if this works. There you go. I actually tried to um, think really hard if it was a bad thing about uh, CER, um, and I worked at it for quite a long time, but I genuinely can't think of a bad thing. I just don't think there's anything about it that um, you can dislike. It is all about how you apply it. Um, and it's also about remembering that uh, the, the output of a particular piece of research doesn't necessarily give you the answer to the question that you want uh, to guess. It isn't necessarily the decision on what you should do. But it's a good basis for starting. Um, empowering decision makers is critically important. Um, being able to share the evidence on what you've got, um, being able to discuss the benefits um, of introducing a new technology with an informed decision maker is much better than simply offering uh, the marketing um, approach to a new product saying, we know it's good, you should take it uh, in the system. It's important that um, there's a partnership in deciding what healthcare systems should take in. I'll show you in a moment that um, certainly it's been our experience that using a formal approach to evaluating new health technologies, comparing new against what the system is using at the moment, produces a positive recommendation in most cases for new products. Um, that's been the experience in the UK, certainly. Um, Evidence-based practice helps to optimize the use of um, uh, new technologies and it helps to make the best out of the resources that a health system has got available. It doesn't matter how a system's funded, whether it's largely from taxation, as is the case in the UK, or from a combination of all sorts of different sources as it is here in the US. Those who've got responsibility for the money have a responsibility for making sure that money is applied uh, in a way that delivers the best value, the maximum value for patients. I've got a couple of slides that show, at least from the UK's point of view, um, that systematic application of SIR doesn't necessarily, doesn't automatically um, have the effect of either inhibiting sales necessarily, certainly not of good added value products, um, or necessarily of, of impacting adversely on investment. And aligning um, the ambitions of um, uh, healthcare providers and health systems using um, a shared approach to the application of comparative effectiveness reviews 
can work as a win-win, both for those who are supplying healthcare systems with new technologies um, and those who are making decisions about which to use. Um, here's a couple of slides that show the um, results of the first 10 years or so of NICE's approach to evaluating health technologies. You can see down the left-hand side, I've characterized the decisions that have been taken. There's more than one decision in any one um, report that comes out of NICE into straight yeses. So in effect, we're saying this is what the manufacturer says the product is good for uh, and we agree with them. Optimized decisions are saying, well, this product is worth having, but only in these circumstances, perhaps at this stage of the disease or for these groups of patients. Let's keep what we've got at the moment where it really works and let's use this new product where it really scores um, improvements for patients. And then only in research is where we just need to know more. Our independent advisory committee is not being able to call it one way or the other, so let's use this product in a research setting. And then finally, decisions where we're just recommending against the use of the technology. Um, and you can see that um, this is slightly misaligned as a, as, a, as a sort of block there, but if you combine the yes and the optimized decisions, about 83% of the recommendations that we make about new technologies are positive. Most of the things that you produce, that the pharmaceutical industry produces, that the other uh, industries that supply the healthcare system around the world are worth having, um, and we supported their use in the NHS. This is the same analysis, but just for devices and diagnostics. We've done rather less in the way of uh, evaluation of medtech products than we have of pharmaceuticals. But again, you can see more or less the same thing there, slightly better aligned box there that shows about 82% of recommendations for medtech products going through NICE's evaluation program are positive. So this isn't a system that's designed to block the introduction of new technologies. We've driven huge amounts of additional expenditure into the NHS over the 10 years that we've been going. Now, I entirely acknowledge that when we started in 1999, the NHS compared to virtually any other developed um, health uh, system in, a, in the developed world was, had suffered from historical underfunding. We were down at something like 6.5%, 7% of gross domestic product spent on health. The ambition was to move that up to somewhere close to 10% of GDP, somewhere near the European average as it was um, around about 2000. Now the investment that's taken place in the NHS over the last seven or eight years or so has more or less achieved that. We're spending more of our national wealth on health than we were, and it's absolutely right that we should do that. So we've been operating in circumstances in which the health system hasn't been spending enough, has been too slow at introducing effective new technologies, um, and needed some means of making sure that the additional investment going into the system was used as wisely as possible. Um, and that's the way we've used our approach to comparative effectiveness research.